Hi, we're going to talk about the reaction quotient. So in a nutshell, here's what it is. The reaction quotient is represented by the letter Q, and that is at any moment in a reaction, what is the ratio of products to reactants? So we're not necessarily at K. In fact, usually we're not at equilibrium, K exactly. Um, so notice the definition, the ratio, the ratio of products to reactants at any given moment. Um, and then I have some qualifiers right here. Now memorize these, but I'm going to help you figure out so that you can, um, you can have reason behind the memorization. If Q equals K, that means you're at equilibrium, okay? Um, so for example, right here, I have a, a chemical reaction, and at this particular moment, here are the concentrations, the nitrogen's 0.5, oxygen 0.25, and the product, the nitrogen monoxide, 4.3 times 10 to the minus three. Now if I plug all of those into um, our equilibrium expression, and that number came out to be four times 10 to the minus four, <gasps> That means it's the same thing as K. What that means is, hey, we're at equilibrium. The forward rate and the reverse rate are equal. Um, so when Q equals K, you're at equilibrium. It happens that the concentration you've been, you've been given show you, oh, yeah, we're at equilibrium, equal rates. Now, if Q is less than K, so if I had a number smaller than four times 10 to the minus four, maybe like um, 6.2 times 10 to the minus five, it's even smaller. Well, oh, that means I'm not at equilibrium. Q is less than K. Now, there's a driving rule right here. Reactions will always go to equilibrium because that's where they're number one, the most stable, and number two is energetically most favorable. That's everything in nature. That's what nature is like the master of conserving energy. So everything goes to equilibrium. If I were to find that the Q value at this moment was that four times 10 to the minus four, or excuse me, the 6.2 times 10 to the minus five, it's smaller. I go, oh, it's still going to equilibrium. We just jumped in and took a sample um, of the reactants and the products, and I can see we're not quite at equilibrium yet. So then the question arises, well, what does it need to do to go to equilibrium? Which way is it going to go? Is it going to shift more to reactants or more to products? And I put this right here. If Q is less than K, then it will shift toward products. Now, here's the part that I want you to think through, that you can figure this out. Remember that our quotient, the reaction quotient, the equilibrium constant, those are always products over reactants. So if Q is smaller than K, it's got to get bigger. It's got to increase, increase, increase to finally get to K. How does that do that? Do we need a larger denominator or a larger numerator? you need a bigger denominator, or excuse me, a bigger numerator, bigger products, you need more products. So this will shift toward the products to get a larger numerator, smaller denominator, and that will bring the number bigger until it reaches K. Sometimes what I'll do, if I'm thinking about this, I'll go, okay, let's say that this is a one and that's a two. Just a really, really simple number. So Q is obviously less than K. And then I think products, over reactants. I'm thinking, okay, what has to happen to these numbers to get us to a two? Well, I need a bigger number. I need a bigger numerator. Okay, it's got to go to products. So sometimes I'll think it out that way. All right, let's look at the next one. If Q is larger than K, which way is it going to shift? Because we know it's going to end up at K. We just happen to jump in, take a picture of all of the concentrations, and it's like, oh, Q is bigger than K, we're not at equilibrium, but I know it will go to equilibrium. So here's what it will do. It will shift to the reactants. Let's use this same example. Let's say Q bigger than K, Q is now two, K is one. Oh, so I need Q to get bigger. I need that ratio between the products and the reactants to decrease. So how can I get that ratio smaller? Do I need more products, more reactants? I need a larger denominator. I need bigger reactants. So if this number gets bigger, bigger, bigger in the denominator, the quotient will get smaller and will reach K, will reach equilibrium, that equilibrium expression. Um, so here it's got to shift toward the reactants to get more reactants. All right, so there's the theory. There's the basis of reaction quotient. Now let's talk about some problems that you could be given. Um, so in the problem, 
you'll know that you're not e equilibrium. It will, um, in fact, on this problem, here's how it is worded. It says you have a flask in which at 2000 Kelvin, the concentration of the nitrogen is 0.5, oxygen 0.25, NO 4.2 times 10 to the three. Is the system in equilibrium? Um, and, and so at that point, you know, oh, I've got to do Q. They're not telling me that I'm in equilibrium. One way or another, inside of the problem, you'll know that you're not in equilibrium and you need to figure out which way it will shift. Sometimes it will say, well, it shifts to reactants or products, something like that. But you'll know you are not at equilibrium. Okay, so let's look at how we're going to figure this out. So I wrote down everything I just read. First thing we do is write the equilibrium constant expression. K is going to be products over reactants Remember, we use gases and aqueous. We never use liquids or solids. These are all gases. I can use everything. So we're going to have the product, nitrogen monoxide. The coefficient is two. Love it. The exponent is two. Easy peasy. Divided by our reactant, N2. The coefficient's one, so the exponent's one. I'll leave it blank. It's understood to be one. Times, whenever you have multiple reactants or products, you multiply them times O2. And that is going to also be an exponent of one. Now we just plug everything in and then compare it to the K. So let's put in our numbers. We have 4.2 times 10 to the minus three squared. Be sure to carry that square, treat it mathematically. Divided by 0.5 times 0.25. Oh, do you know what? I apologize. We're trying to see where we're at. So this is Q at this moment. What's the ratio between products and reactants? Sorry about that, because we're, we don't know for at equilibrium. Okay, so we do this uh, multiplication and division, and I get at this moment, the ratio of products to reactants is 1.41 times 10 to the minus four. Now comes the comparison. I look at my K, let's write it down here. Four times 10 to the minus four. And I look at my Q. And I say, which one's bigger? The K is bigger. So Q is less than K. 1.4 times 10 to the minus four is less than four times 10 to the minus four. So which way will this proceed to reach equilibrium? Uh, so this is going to proceed to the products. Let's think this out. This number is small. That number is bigger, and I'm thinking, okay, products over reactants. I need this to get to a bigger number. This has got to grow. We need a bigger number than that 1.4. How can I get a bigger number? Well, I need more products. I need more in the uh, numerator, less in the denominator, and that quotient will get bigger. So this is going to proceed. Sometimes I do an arrow. It will proceed to the products, and then it will reach equilibrium. Okay, so there you have reaction quotient. You're going to have to write down the equilibrium expression, plug in what you have, and remember this is always a snapshot, and you don't know where you're at. If you have more reactants, more products, then you should if you're at perfect equil equilibrium. This is a snapshot, you plug it in, and then you compare what you get, that reaction quotient, Q to K, then think your way through it. And it's going to be one of these three scenarios, one of those three scenarios, okay? Nice work. If you need more help with equilibrium, check out the playlist under equilibrium. Lean think. Have a good day. Thanks.